Right, welcome back everybody. Jeffrey here with theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios having a CUBE conversation. The madness of the fall uh, conference season is just over the horizon, but it hasn't hit yet. So we're excited to get some time to bring people into the studio and we're excited to have a, a many time CUBE alum, but he's never been to the studio before. And it's Brian Goldfarb, the CMO of Splunk. Brian, great to see you. Yeah, great to be here. This is amazing. I was going to say, how you like the digs? I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> it's nice. We don't have to set up the lights every time like we do at, uh, at all the various shows. So the crew is very too, which and is and super, super cold. important. So what's going on at Splunk? Give us, uh, give us an update. You just had the quarterly, or, uh, the quarterly announcement came out a month or so ago. I was yeah. listening to that before you came in. Another rock and roll revenue growth, you guys just seem to be hitting it time and time and time again. On fire, things are going great at Splunk. We just, you know, huge rounds of customer success, lots of new product and technology. I think it's been a big focus for us. How do we continue to drive the innovation engine for security and for IT and really transform how, you know, as the leader in big data, how we help our customers. It's right. been super fun and from the marketing side, you know, we're driving an enormous amount of transformation. I think you see this happening for CMOs everywhere, their businesses are changing. I, you know, I fundamentally believe that the marketing department is the mar department going through the most transformation right now. Right. CMOs are under the most pressure to change. And so there's so much going on in how we're thinking about digital first, how we're thinking about being data driven, Splunk on Splunk in many ways, how we're using our own technology right. to drive our business and community, which I know you guys are super passionate about here. Right, and then not only community, but your kind of reputation when you came in is you're a data guy. You like to measure the data. You like to you know see how things are working. Not like your your dad's old uh, marketing department where you just kind of throw it up and write fifty percent of that budget is wasted. We're just not sure which fifty percent. Yeah, like well, that's a, that was a great excuse for a long time. You know, <laughs> exactly. I always talk about kind of hashtag math camp uh, is one of the things we talk about a lot. How do we think about leveraging data? in everything that we do, right? How do we get data-driven insights? How do we have data-driven instrumentation? And ultimately, how are we using that to drive the marketing department? And I think what we're seeing so many places is, first, the accountability required in marketing is changing, right? You can no longer say, hey, 50% works. Right. I don't know what half. <laughs> it's what's working right now for our customers. And right. you know, we see the need to leverage data and digitization across businesses being a key part of that. But we also can't lose sight in many ways of the need for community and the emotional connection that brands have with customers. And I think one of the things, you know, see the t-shirt, right. the energy, like one of the things we're doing really uniquely beyond being amazing at delivering big data solutions for our customers is creating that community and that connection, building that emotion and doing that in a way where we can connect the dots from you know, the relationship that we're building customer success and ultimately you know, super happy and satisfied right. customers. And we've seen that, we've been going to SpongeBob.conf, actually it was my first CUBE gig in 2012. Oh my gosh. Uh, back at the, was it the Aria? No, was it the Cosmo? It was, was it the, the Cosmo, Cosmopolitan. right around the IPO. Um, yeah. So you guys have you know, a super vibrant community, really passionate and engaged, and I don't know if it's by uh, smart planning or circumstance or you know, a little bit of both, but you know, kind of your play in the security market is the security market has just exploded yeah. and using machine data, which, oh, by the way, has something to do with IoT and IoT. So, you know, you guys are, are really well positioned sitting on all that machine generated data. You think data. about the roots around IT first, right? How do we help IT professionals uh, find out what's going wrong with their systems and fix them as fast right. as possible right. so they can really focus on customer outcomes, taking those same patterns to security, which you rightly uh, acknowledge on fire, super important board level issues. And now we think about businesses going through digital evolution, right? They're iteratively trying to add more and more digital components. You see it in the marketing department, right? We have better access to data, right. so we can become more digital. And as we see our customers evolve, the patterns that were successful in IT and security now work in other parts of the business. A great example, uh, just as a customer example, Yelp. Like, in Bay Area, like I don't know if, for you, like if it's not on Yelp and I'm not looking at a review, I can't eat there because it's too much risk. <laughs> but the you know they they were working through how do they improve the quality of the experiences customers have with food delivery. Right, it's not an IT thing necessarily. It's not security, but it's how do you take their data and begin to investigate the, the root causes of issues. Right. How do you then monitor and detect changes in those patterns, and how do you automate and analyze the resolution with the end goal of very clearly having that warmer food for customers. Right. So it's been an amazing experience for them and they have amazing outcomes and all of that is as more and more data explodes, 
across the business. You see Splunk adding value in every department. So I'd love to get your take, something we talk a lot about uh, on theCUBE, and you've been in the business for a long time before Splunk as well, and that's, you know, before data was really a liability. It was expensive to gather, it was expensive to store, you had to buy a bunch of uh, boxes and stick it in a data center and usually yeah. bought like 75% more than you needed in case you had a bump. So it, it was really <laughs> kind of a liability. Now obviously, as you said, data is a huge asset, some would say the oil, et cetera, it's an asset but it's not measured on the balance sheet. It's still not measured on the balance sheet today. So yeah. when you see some crazy valuations for a lot of companies, say at Facebook or Google, it's really a reflection of a multiple of the value of their data, not necessarily just a multiple of the value of their revenue or their earnings. So as you work with your customers and as you measure kind of ROI on return of an investment, say the Yelp investment, yeah. it's a very different measure of ROI if the, data, if the investment on the data side is to drive better outcomes is to drive more revenue, is to drive maybe new product development and innovation, and yet again, it's not really measured as an asset. So how does that kind of play into how people decide to do projects, how they measure the yeah. success of projects when it's, it's not the cost center that And that's the transformation be. that's happening. Right. right. Digital is happening everywhere, which really means data is happening everywhere, and it's not just the structured data that we're used to. It's all the unstructured data the data that people were unaware necessarily had enormous amounts of value, certainly not balance sheet value, but any value. Right, right. And I think the world has realized in every department that that data has value. And so those decisions on where to have projects, if you will, uh, stems from that understanding. And, and the best way to evaluate it is what are customers doing, right? We're working with Domware, uh, automotive company, and their challenges were how do they secure you know, their automotive systems, their, their plant systems, and they had, all, they're in the old world, that was disconnected, it was offline, and as more and more of that becomes digital, it's way easier to sort of take advantage of software like Splunk and apply it to those use cases right. and, and start to realize the value. And the value, at the end of the day, comes from, I'm solving a set of problems. I'm, I'm more secure, I have happier customers, I'm delivering better process, I have faster time to resolution with my systems recovery. And in marketing, if you think about it from the CMO lens, which could be, you know, it's a, is, is, is really important, we can start to tune, you know, the res, our, our investments and the campaigns that we're running and the messages that we're using for the audience, and it's particularly important in B2B marketing, where you have a lot of data, but it's longer sales cycles. And I don't know, you know, I believe it's the CMO in many ways and the marketing department works for sales, right? It's our responsibility to drive the demand, to help our business, right. but at the same time, it's critical that we don't lose sight of that creativity and that community that is so important to the loyalty that happens over time with brands. Right, and, that, and that's another, just such an interesting point, right, is back in the day, you know, the brands controlled the messaging, the brands controlled the information, the brands controlled the content. That's no longer the case anymore. By the time somebody yeah. inquires to you or participates in a campaign or shows up at a Splunk event or, or goes to the website, they've probably done some homework, they've probably talked to their peers, they've probably done some investigation on online, and I know when I go online to investigate stuff, I'm looking at the other people talking about the products that I'm interested, not necessarily the company's product. So it's a really different challenge from a CMO perspective mm -hmm. to engage and enable and, and, and help those people be your advocates while at the same time you don't really have this quite as control of the message as you used to have back well, in the day. It, it, and I, it, that's actually I think a, a great thing, right? Most customers are doing more due diligence on their own. And I think you know, there's, there's research, you can see research from others that say something to the effect of 60 or 70% of the decision making process is occurring before they even engage the brand. Right. And so once you recognize that, how you tie all these things together becomes super important. So I'll go back to community. I don't want to over harp on it, but that's the only way that you can effectively manage the unknown unknowns in that first 70%. How do you get your customer advocates to tell their stories, the value they're getting? How do you make sure that the content that you think is relevant to the industry is out there, you're contributing to it. How do you, in your, what, what, just think about what you guys are doing. Right. How do you distribute the value chain of content creation to more 
um, valuable individuals that then can tie back to organizations and how do you tie up the stories that we tell. Right, right. So I want to I test another hypothesis by you because again, you're a smart guy. It, and we talk about it a lot here, which is really kind of classic old school, have a big number with some small conversion rate and that's your yield. Yep. Versus having a relatively small but targeted number with a much higher conversion rate because these are actually the people that care versus more of a kind of a broadcasting yeah. strategy. Are you seeing some of that? Are you trying to execute some of those types of things? I think that's critical in the future of all marketing. Right? The broad reach stuff is expensive. It's really hard to measure the impact. And yeah, if you can do 10 million here at 50 basis points, you'll get to some outcome. But the world is pivoting to very outcome driven. Right? Right, How many right. transactions did I drive? What's the value of those transactions? Or more importantly, how successful were my customers? We care at Splunk deeply about getting the software, adopting the software, getting value from the software. And so that has nothing to do with big, broad, you know, hit 100 million people. Right. Right? It's hit the right 10,000 people, right. pull them through a customer journey that starts with their research phase, ultimately puts them through the adoption phase in, in an incredibly successful way. And that tunes everything, your investment, your philosophy, what you reward. Because they think in the, the older school model, there was this belief that more is better. Right. Just do more. Right. What, you're a successful company, so what are you going to do? Just do more. More, more, mm -hmm. more, more, more. And you get these linear growth patterns on more. And eventually that stops working because something else breaks. Right. And you realize that more wasn't actually doing anything. It just felt good <laughs> in the moment. It was just more. It was just more. <laughs> and it kept people busy and it was great. It was great in those sense. And so that's why measurement, that's why being able to take your data and get value from your data and listen to your data is so critical in every department and marketing more than anyone else now has that data so you can be targeted. I mean, I, if, I can if I only touched five people and those five people became incredibly successful customers, that's an amazing marketing campaign right, right. with huge success yeah. versus I ran a commercial during the Super Bowl and I touched you know, 240 million people but no one bought any software. You might feel good about that. Right but it isn't necessarily driving the outcomes and the results, and in B2B, that's so critical. Yeah, and, and obviously we're huge believers of that, and also on the community side as well, because you know, we want to get peers, you know, your buyer's peers, talking about their experience with the product is very, very different than reading any sure. kind of marketing uh, brochure or those types of things, so it's su such a critical component. I mean, just with the Yelp example, that's a peer concept, right? Right. that applies exactly the same to enterprise software, community. Like, Community is critical. Like with digital is the trend that's driving all the change, right? That gives you access to data, which forces accountability into new parts of the organization that never really had it before, no more excuses. <laughs> and now you have this incredibly yeah. new community-driven model, which never used to be important. Right. But actually, to me, is the lifeblood of the long-term investment that marketers are making today. Right, right. The other thing that you guys have done a good job uh, kind of uh, growing with the times, if you will, and that's customers want choice and they want buying choice, right? Yep. So you guys have obviously adopted cloud, um, you have more subscription type of opportunity. So I wonder if you could speak to, you know, from a marketer point of view, you have to kind of repackage things. You got to look for funny arbitrage opportunities that kind of screw things up in the market and <laughs> you know, your channel partner conflict, you have to kind of manage all these things. But, but the reality is people want to buy the way they want to buy Absolutely. and you have to give them the options um, that they expect to be there. And I think that's really the big change is the expectation is there that you have those different types well, of no options. No one's successful in isolation anymore. Any belief that one vendor and one product is the solution to all ills is a fallacy. And so, you know, there's two views there. One is what are you doing from a technology and innovation perspective? And that's for us very clearly focused on making sure Splunk and all the software you already have work better together. The sum of the parts should be greater. Right, right. right. And then from a marketing perspective, it's recognizing you know, how you can go to market, how you can uh, sell with all of the partner in the ecosystem, right? This isn't a competitive conversation. It's how do we make customers successful? And so Splunk and Salesforce is better because I can look at my Salesforce data, I can use Splunk, I can drive my organization. That's what we're doing inside the house and we see customers starting to do it, right? Splunk in Hadoop. It's not about the Hadoop ecosystem per se being separate. Those that, that data lake coupled with our software is a better solution. And so Splunk with all these different technologies together being more effective is critical. Right. And it's exactly what you said. Customers have what they have. They've made the investments that they've made. They have great reasons for all of those things. And I want to augment 
their success with our software. Right, right. So it's such an exciting time to be to be in marketing, especially yeah, in the amazing. B2B space. So give you the last word, Brian, before we cut out here, uh, Spunk.conf 2019 is coming up, just 19. Dot com, 2018, dot com 18, yeah. 18 is coming up. So uh, what can we expect? How many people, yeah. what, what should people uh, be making sure they get registered and get there? I'm glad it's not 2019 yet. Yes, uh, exactly. I, I have like 15 months <laughs> until we have to worry about that. You're not starting that. the planning on that? You we are, of course are. we are. So <laughs> dot com 18, it's, dot our, com 18. it's our amazing user conference. You were there in 2012. We're going to have almost 10,000 people there. It's in Orlando, Florida, October 1st to October 4th. It's, it's really, it's an amazing experience, right? Really focused on celebrating our amazing user community, you know, demonstrating all the great innovations, and then bringing them together to share, share ideas, which I think is really, for me, as someone who's only been at Splunk for almost two years, so exciting. Every one of our customers is using our software at Splunk in innovative ways. And what we're seeing more and more is it's expanding outside of just IT and security. And so as our customers talk to each other, share ideas, share use cases, we see the light bulb moments, the aha moments, if you will, going off. And that part is incredible. Right, well, we'll be there again. I so know, we, we're uh, excited. We're looking forward to it. All right, Brian, well, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes out of your day on a Friday to, uh, to stop by our yeah, studios. Yeah, my pleasure, thanks for having me. It's awesome, All I really right. appreciate it. Pleasure. He's Brian, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE, we're in Palo Alto, uh, studios, thanks for watching, see you next time.